cardiac output. Cardiac output means amount of blood that is pumped out by each ventricle per minute is known as cardiac output and cardiac output is the product of heart rate and the stroke volume. So variation in the heart rate and stroke volume affects the cardiac output. Factors that affects the heart rate and stroke volume also affect the cardiac output. In this lecture, we will study the factors that affect the stroke volume. There are two factors that affect the stroke volume. First is the homometric and second is the heterometric. Homometric regulation and heterometric regulation regulate the stroke volume. In this lecture, we will study the heterometric regulation. Heterometric regulation means force of contraction of the myocardium depend upon the preload and afterload. Preload and afterload. Preload means preload means degree to which myocardium is stretched before the contraction means pre ventricle how much ventricle receiving the blood causes produces a stretching effect on the myocardium and this stretching is directly proportioned to the development of the force of contraction within the myocardium okay so if there is good amount of end diastolic volume it causes good amount of stretching of the myocardium and it ultimately lead to development of good tension or good force of contraction of the myocardium this law is known as frank sterling law which shows the relationship between the length of myocardium and tension developed within the myocardium and length of myocardium is directly proportional to the development of the tension in the myocardium. So the length of myocardium is depend on the end diastolic volume and end diastolic volume means the vol volume of the blood that is present within the ventricle at the end of the diastole. At the end of relaxation of the ventricle the amount of blood present within the ventricle is known as end diastolic volume and this end diastolic volume will depend on the venous return how much atrium get the venous blood the, the, this amount of the blood the same amount of the blood goes to the ventricle in the end of in, end of the diastole so the all the factors that affect the venous return can affect the stroke volume also so what are the factors that affect the venous return first is the thoracic pump thoracic pump during the inspiration our intrathoracic pressure decreases because because there is descent of the diaphragm and expansion of the rib causes more spaces uh, cause more space within the thoracic cavity and it reduces the pressure within the thoracic cavity and this reduction of the pressure within the thoracic cavity uh, work is a suction pump and it sucks the blood from the abdominal cavity it sucks the venous blood from the abdominal cavity one more thing happen here the descent of diaphragm causes increase in the intra-abdominal pressure and when there increase in the abdominal pressure it squeezes the blood out of the abdomen and the blood goes upward toward the thoracic cavity so this is the thoracic pump now second is the cardiac pump cardiac pump there are two force work as a cardiac pump first is the propelling force and then second is the suction force propelling force the ventricles act as a propelling force when when ventricle during the systole contracts and propel the blood eject the blood or uh, eject the blood in the circulation is known as propelling force and how much blood it propels that much blood comes again through the venous return in the heart now what suction force suction force means during the atrial diastole there is less pressure within the atrium and this less pressure again act as a suction force and it sucks the blood from the venous system so these are the two forces that work as a cardiac pump and ultimately these forces ultimately causes increased venous return now the muscle pump muscle pump 
in the muscles of our body there are between the muscle fiber there are veins and when these muscles contracts they squeezes the veins these deep veins and when they squeezes the deep veins it propels the blood upward towards the heart and this this function of the muscle is known as muscle pump total blood volume total blood volume also affect the cardiac uh, venous return when there is increase in total vo blood volume increase in the venous return also capacity of venous system if our veins are uh, relaxed dilated they accommodate the blood within them and unable to uh, and they are unable to uh, propel them forward okay when there is increased venous tone increases it increases the venous return body position in standing position there is a peripheral pooling of the blood but as we become uh, as we come in the recumbent position or we come into the supine position from the supine position there is increase in the venous return now about the ventricular com compliance ventricular compliance means the ability of ventricles ability of ventricles to accommodate the blood and to the propel the blood is known as ventricular compliance uh, during the damage uh, whenever there is damage to the myocardium this compliance or this uh, ability of the ventricle decreases and when there is a decreased compliance to of the ventricle causes decreased venous return decreased venous return also occur in infiltrative disease of the myocardium when there is uh, certain uh, deposition of the certain substances within the myocardium causes decreased ability of the myocardium to contract and to propel the blood so ventricle compliance is also also affects the venous return these are the factors which affects the venous returns and thereby the end diastolic volume and thereby the length of the myocardium and thereby the force of contraction of the myocardium and thereby the stroke volume so these are the factors which affect the stroke volume